Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I broadcast out of the UK around the world. And if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Now I want to talk to those British people who are currently in Jamaica because they couldn't get a flight back because of the COVID-19 restrictions. And where Jamaica's airlines, were, there were no flights out and England was not allowing anybody in. Well, they're now put on a flight on the 7th of May. That is just four days away. So the Brits need to get on the ball quickly. They need to get the ball rolling quickly. And like I said, if there are any Jamaicans out there who are watching this video, who know of Brits in Jamaica, who need to come back home, please draw their attention to this video. I'm going to give them all the information that they need. Okay, so the first thing that they've got to do is visit the FCO office, return to the UK page for how to register, and they need to do that quickly. Uh, priority will be given to vulnerable passengers, i.e. those with existing conditions and those over 70. But there again, that's going to be a minority, I would imagine. Where possible, the FCO will also bring back Jamaicans with leave to remain in the UK and who have lived in the UK in the last year. But I don't know if those Jamaicans are going to want to come when now they've heard about the mandatory vaccine. They might want to stay put. I know if it was me, I would. But anyway, um, we don't know people's circumstances, individual circumstances, but like I said, as long as they have leave to remain in the UK, residential status is A-OK, -okay, they'll bring them back. It's a good time. Is it a good time to come back? Well, you know what the situation is. We are on lockdown. Um, it's not as rigid as it was. Well, it is rigid, but I mean, at least you can go out your house and go shopping. And you can exercise, but you won't be able to be up and down and this and that. And there's no raves or anything like that. So if you're looking forward to coming back for a rave, I have a friend in who was in Grenada and she said she was coming back to England looking so forward for a rave. And what? And look what happened. No raves. Anyway, um, the British missions in the Caribbean have helped over 11,000 British travellers to return to the UK, including 4,000 from Jamaica. 75 million is available for special charter flights. But what I don't understand is they've got 75 million available for special charter flights, but people have to pay for their flights. It's not their fault that they, they couldn't get back home. So I think it's a bit unfair to charge them for the flight. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. The charter flights are for British travellers who normally reside in the UK, as well as their dependents. I I wonder if they get cheaper. I don't even think they're cheaper flights. I think they're £367 per person. So I don't even think that's cheaper than the normal flights. Anyway, Jamaican citizens with appropriate residency rights will be included. And those charter flights, I, I don't know if them have food on there and drink and all that kind of stuff. But really and truly, you don't really have a choice. You're going to have to get on it anyway. Those eligible to fly will be sent information about getting to the airport, flight itineraries and airlines when the seat is confirmed. Subject to that you've registered. Remember, details re luggage and flight costs carriers will be available on the booking portal. The cost is £367 per person. If you cannot afford the travel costs, a British citizen can apply for an emergency loan from the Corporate Travel Management. And their number is plus four four seven five three seven four one six one two four. That number is plus four four seven five three seven four one six one two four. And I'll try to remember to put the link below on that. So that is that. So please, any Jamaican who's watching this video who are, who's living in Jamaica, please get hold of, please get word to any Brit 
out there and let them know that the flight is leaving Jamaica on the 7th of May. I don't know what time. They're going to have to sort that out. But they need to register with the FCO. That's the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Okay? So that's all on that topic. Now we're going to go to British Airways. Now, talking about flights and stuff, um, British Airways are struggling with the impact of travel restrictions, lockdown and social distancing. They've placed 30,000 out of their 42,000 employees on furlough. So that means more than likely 12,000 are going to be made redundant. And the thing is with the furlough scheme, it's predicated on the fact that it's, it's only for a time and it's only to cover people until, you know, stabilise, until people get on their feet. But it just seems to be extending itself and extending itself. It looks like they want to extend it for another three months, the furlough. But the good thing is, is that people are being paid. Um, so the government has a 40 billion furlough scheme and it relies on the fact that things will return to normal. I'm just wondering if too much damage has been done, but I don't want to be a pessimist. Um, thing is, is that British Airways are talking about they want to get back on their feet and they are being allowed to fly. But now that people have been out of work or those who have either lost their jobs or who have been furloughed and they only have 80 percent, they, they're bound to have had to dip into any savings that they had that they normally use for their vacation. So I can't imagine people having liquid cash to go on holiday. Mind you, people might, might be so desperate to get out of their houses and go somewhere after being locked up. We'll call it locked up and locked down. Um, that they might even just say, Cha, you know, get their credit cards out and decide to um, take the holiday. The only other thing is, is that those who took, who'd booked the holiday and were unable to go, they're still fighting for their refunds. Um, there's some kind of conflict between the bank and the insurance and at all as to who is responsible and credit cards. And um, so, and then there's, they want to give them the option of travel vouchers as opposed to returning the money. People are saying they don't want the travel vouchers, they want the money. And I can understand why in this kind of climate. But yeah, so I'm not quite sure if this particular um, brood of people are going to be up for going on another holiday or booking another holiday. Um, especially if they haven't got their money back. They're not going to have the money to rebook. Or they might decide, after all, if they know the flights are scheduled to leave, they might just decide to take the flight instead and get the voucher if it takes too long to get the money. Me? Uh, I don't know what I would do. I just think it's um, it's quite tragic, really. What else is there? Smokers. According to The Economist, smokers are less likely to die from the coronavirus. The logic being that smokers are more likely to be drinkers and blood alcohol kills the virus. Isn't that weird? Do you remember when that Jamaican guy was talking about white rum and how it would kill the virus if you put a little piece of white rum and how they ran him down and cussed him and all that kind of stuff? Now they're reckoning that the alcohol that um, smokers are drinking is what's killing off the virus. Don't take my word for it. Don't all go out there and buy yourself alcohol. Please, please. That's a disclaimer. Because I don't know how true this is. Anyway, apparently in France, 25% of French adults smoke. In late April, 5% of 482 coronavirus patients who came to the Pré Salpêtrière, don't know how to say it in French, hospital in Paris, between the 28th of February and the 9th of April were daily smokers, only 5%. The ratio of smokers to non-smokers in America and China varied, though it, it, they all revealed habitual smokers to be significantly underrepresented among those requiring hospital treatment for the illness. So I'm not telling you all to go off and smoke, please. 
But that seems to be what they're saying. But to be honest, I mean, those smokers, if they are coughing and spluttering, they're not going to want to go to the hospital anyway, are they? So um, I don't know how accurate these things are. Just because they're not reporting to the hospital doesn't mean that, you know, they're not susceptible to it. What else have we got? We've got um, home working. It looks like it's going to be, for the white collar worker, apparently, it looks like it's going to be way, way into the future. So for the likes of me, you don't look like I'm going to see an office for a while. Um, in easing the lockdown, white collar workers will be expected to keep most staff working from home for several months to prevent public transport from being overwhelmed. But I was trying to think, if you're keeping white collar uh, workers or whatever they call it, at home, working from home, who's going to be overwhelming? The public transport. It's not like they're opening up everywhere. Anyway, plans will be drawn for the best practice working in seven, seven different types of workspace. And it's going to be published next week. Companies due to restart will be non-food retailers, factories, warehouses, but offices will be encouraged to close for longer. When offices do reopen, it will be on an alternate basis. Okay, what they're saying is, is that if offices, or when offices decide to reopen, they're going to alternate the staff. So there'll be a week on, week off type thing. Smokers will be modified. Smoking, vaping areas are going to have to keep up social distancing so they can't be huddled up together. Work breaks to be staggered throughout the day to prevent overcrowding. Non-food shops will continue to be marshaled and social distancing practiced. Um, they're discouraging um, sharing cars with non-family owners, you know, like they used to carpool, that's being discouraged. And um, pubs and restaurants will not be opening anytime soon. What is the point of, I mean, that is the fun in, you know, getting back to normal, isn't it? Oh, going out for a meal or going out for a little drink or something, but they're not opening. So you're stuck with your back garden, love. Back garden, do you look a barbecue, have you look a drink and be satisfied. Um, Burger King and KFC, they've remodelled to factor in social distancing pro protocols. So they're going to be open. Talk about encouraging um, unhealthy eating, honestly. Cine World will be staggering seating and fewer films at any one time. And the thing is, I bought one of those tickets. Um, because I get a reduced rate every now and then because of where I work. And it runs out in October. So I don't know what's going to happen, whether or not I can still go to the cinema and see one of their films. Hmm. Okay. Um, and last but not least, Zoom. Zoom is getting quite popular. I mean, I watched it for the first time last night. We had, um, they had this reggae collaboration. They had Glenn Washington. They had Barry Biggs. They had um, B.B. Seaton. And they had Dennis Al Capone and a couple of other guys. And it was being hosted by this, I think he's a French raster called Jadil. And um, they were all talking about their experiences growing up and what they'd done and who produced them and who promoted them and stuff like that. And they were talking about, you know, all the concerts that have been cancelled because of the lockdown. So it was quite interesting. And the recept it's so clear. I mean, to be honest, I think somebody should tell the artists how they should position themselves because half the time you could look right up into their nose hole. But, I mean, apart from that, it was, you know, apart from that, it was really, really good. So um, Zoom is good for exercising, training, meetings and concerts. All you need is a meeting ID. It's very easy to set up. You just download it. And it's probably best to do it when you don't really need it. So you're prepared so that if you do get invited to Zoom, you can, you've got 
you get the ID that they're going to give you and you can just go in as opposed to somebody inviting you and then you've got to download and then you've got to have your email verified. And then you have to kind of set up your little profile and t- things like that. So, um, but yeah, they're doing, con- you can watch concerts from it and all sorts. It's really quite good. It also has beauty filters for the, you know, for those who are quite arrogant. Um, is it arrogant? Yeah, arrogant or superficial. You know, they have beauty filters to make you look more beautiful, if you like. People are doing And also, if your place is in a mess, they can kind of create a camouflage at the back and you can have, like, um, leaves, like you're in a garden or you can have a waterfall or you can have the night sky. So they can do all of that. So just in case your place is in a mess and you think, I ain't going on Zoom, I don't want anybody to see how my yard looks like, they don't have to see what your yard looks like. Um, What else? You can opt to enter in quietly because it's like a real meeting. Once you go in, people can hear you come in. They can hear you pull up your chair. They can hear all your movements. So you can even opt to enter quietly. They've got those options. You just go to the settings and just look at audio and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, and it used to have a bad rap about security, but um, version 5 is the latest version, and all the security features have been updated, so you shouldn't have to worry. But guess who's trying to jump on the bandwagon now? No fear, Spook. Facebook now talk about, oh, they're coming up with their new video conferencing that's going to be better than Zoom. I mean, why can't they just leave people alone? Haven't they got enough? They've got nearly the whole bloody world on their platform. Yet, you know, you see a little company come up and doing their little thing and they want to take that over as well. I mean, talk about monopoly. So anyway, I don't know how that's going to work. It might be more successful only because of the um, Facebook platform and everybody's already on it they don't have to download a new platform and try to work out how it works and how it doesn't work so who knows how that's going to go but for now zoom is the way to go especially while you're in quarantine and you want to do your exercises or you want to attend training and it's all free you want to attend training and um, I don't know you can upgrade but I don't know what upgrade gives you so with the basic, you get 100 meetings, so you can put on 100 meetings for free. You can invite up to 100 people. And yeah, it's bloody brilliant. So if you're imaginative, you might come up with something. I might even do one of my relationship forums on Zoom. I was thinking about that. I used to do this um, relationship forum called T- Talking Blues. I might reignite that. That might be interesting. And a lot of people like that. It's just the distancing. So, yeah. Got me thinking. So, um, what else is there? Yeah, I think that's all for now. Um, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. The weather wasn't too great. I didn't. I bought this lounge chair and I plan to, you know, go out in the garden and lounge with me a glass of um, rum punch and plate of cheese, but it never happened. So maybe next weekend. And that's all for now. Keep safe. Stay blessed. Stay Tanayard.